I am a nerd. Some dictionaries would define this as a person who is usually male, is unattractive, socially embarrassing, and awkward. <laughs> Sounds more like that guy than me. Other dictionaries would define this as a person who is extremely interested in one subject and knows a lot about it. I like to think that I fit somewhere in this remit. Though in this day and age, I think the word nerd is much bigger than its definition. Like everything else, it's an image or an idea. My idea of nerddom lies within the realm of sci-fi and fantasy, a space long occupied by the geeks and nerds of society. Although mainstream franchises such as the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Star Wars, and popular TV shows like Game of Thrones have brought it to the forefront of cinema as well as into the mainstream consciousness, it is still considered a space for the outcast, weirdos, and stands of society. I've always wondered why that is. And it goes back to this idea of images. In those two genres, you can be anything or anyone. The impossible is suddenly possible. So my love for sci-fi and fantasy started off with books. And I won't lie to you, the reason for this was because I was a really strong reader and I wanted to read the biggest books in the fastest amount of time. <laughs> Slowly but surely, I found myself being dragged into these bizarrely beautiful worlds and I related to them. Me, a little black girl from Slough, could somehow picture herself in the place of demons the Philip Pullman kind, don't get me twisted. <laughs> um, people with powers and, and mythical creatures. People would always ask me why I'd read these chunky books, and I'd always reply, well, if reading is escapism, why would I want to escape to a world that looks exactly like my own? And this idea kind of became a mantra as I started my own writing journey, but even more so as I began to engage in ideas of race and oppression. I wanted to be able to gift people with an escape, just as I myself had been gifted by my favorite writers. So this is an extract from an online story that I wrote. I opened my mouth to confirm that it was indeed my own reflection staring back at me. Pale skin, sunken brown eyes, and a thin face. I looked like a ghost from another world. That was the first story that I ever completed. Um, and it's gone on to accumulate over a billion reads. Now, I'm not gonna tell you the title of it because I don't want anyone to ever read it. And by anyone, I mean you guys specifically. <laughs> it's a weird moment in my writing career because at once it's an achievement, but at the same time, it's a haunting reminder that even at the age of 16, I didn't think that black people could exist in sci-fi and fantasy, and yet somehow magic and creatures of the night could. Now, where did I get such an idea from? So I came across this quote by William Arthur Ward when I was reading an article about how AI are inevitably going to take over the world. You have been warned. <laughs> and it's always stuck with me. Most of humanity's successes and failures have been, for the most part, all been a matter of belief. 2001, A Space Odyssey came out in 1968 with these strange, techie, futuristic devices that you and I would recognize as a tablet today. And sure, we didn't quite get those hoverboards or the lace-up nights in 2015 like Back to the Future said we would, but I think a segue is pretty close. William Arthur Ward's quote highlights the importance of images when it comes to capturing new realities, and this has never been more important than today. We live in a world where we're not only creating our own images, but we're being fed them constantly. This means that they hold more weight than actual concrete def definitions. For example, what a nerd is supposed to look like, or who gets to exist in the future. The rise of Film, media, and the internet means that we have never before had so much access to resources that allow us to reinforce the images that we stand behind. We can reinforce images of hate and of love in the way that we surf the web, in the TV shows that we choose to watch, and for writers like myself, in what we choose to create for consumption. When I first started writing, a lot of my work was just imitating what I had already taken in. 
And it took me a long time to realize that I was just repeating the same old narratives, even in a genre as imaginative as sci-fi and fantasy. And it's no wonder why. Here's some statistics for you. So this is a chart showing the d diversity gap in the 100 top grossing sci-fi films um, from 2014. My favorite statistic is this Will Smith one. That's 75% of the characters of color being played by one person. Like Will Smith is epic, like the whole bungee jump thing, everything that's really cool, but he's not the only vessel for black storytelling. This study made me think of some of the sci-fi and fantasy um, films that had informed my own work, the things that inspired and continue to inspire me today. I've sorted them out into three different sections. So the first section is sci-fi movies that have characters of color in minor or background roles. The second slide shows um, films that have characters of color in supporting or secondary roles. And the final one uh, is characters of color that are main characters um, in what we would consi consider to be diverse films. Now you'll notice that the list gets smaller and smaller. And that's not necessarily an accurate depiction of what the industry is like, but it is an accurate depiction of what I, a regular film goer, have been exposed to. So these are four that I highlighted in red. X-Men, Avatar, District 9, and Hunger Games. What do they all have in common? They all detail tales of oppression, touching on themes of racism, discrimination, and exploitation, but at the same time erase the people who go through these things as realities in their everyday lives. So it's not that black stories aren't necessarily a theme in sci-fi and fantasy films, but rather that black people are unnecessary in the telling of them. Here's another fact for you. So there have been seven black women who have won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. Of those seven, one was playing a slave, two were playing maids, and one was playing an abusive mother. Precious, 12 Years a Slave, The Help, Hotel Rwanda. These are all important films. I'm not saying that they shouldn't be made. In fact, they're vital in allowing us to reflect on the past. It's only in reflecting on the past that we can accept who we are today and see how we can move forward. But if they're the only ones that gain exposure or get Oscars, then what does that do to the image that we have of black people? I know the image that it put in my head, that we don't get to exist in the future, that our greatest depiction is that of our past. So what's the solution to this? How do we tell stories that are more diverse, black stories that are more diverse? We nerd out. We invent and we innovate. Black Panther was a pretty big deal, right? Why? Because for the first time in the mainstream media, we saw a black film that was diverse in every manner of its storytelling. Vibranium was just as important to the story as the themes of oppression. Racism and hovercrafts went hand in hand and it left us hungry for more, left the world hungry for more. I mean, I personally went to see it in the cinema seven times, so, you know. <laughs> black Panther brought with it Afrofuturism. The term is defined as a cultural aesthetic that combines fantasy, science fiction, and history um, to comment on the African-American experience and connect those of the black diaspora with their African ancestry. But it's so much more than that, it's a solution. If we are going to use speculative fiction as a way of imagining new futures, then we need them to reflect the social issues that we are fighting so hard for today. It's not just about representation, it's about empathy and reflection. And that's something that Black Panther did so well. In imagining an African country that could not exist today, the audience were forced to consider the ways in which the past has affected the future. But Black Panther doesn't stop there, it carries on. It brings together old wounds and presents us with new futures and brings them together to create a complex picture of what it means to be black today and what it could mean to be black in the future. And that's what we need. It gave us an invitation to imagine a new future as well as the roads that we might be able to build. So you might have noticed my slightly provocative title, All Stories Matter. I chose it because in the light of everything that I've said, I believe that black stories are as much my story as they are yours. 
when I began writing my newest piece of work, I of course had in mind the little black girl that read all those chunky books, but I also had in mind all of you. Because you should care about my stories, just as I should care about yours. And that's not a piece of self-promotion, but rather an invitation to imagine a new future, to imagine how bright, colorful, and fantastical it could be. Thank you. <laughs>